never let a unicorn scribble. Written and illustrated by Diane Alver. I recently got a pet unicorn. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. And everyone keeps telling me, never let a unicorn scribble. Hmm, why would anyone say such a thing? I mean, unicorns can run on rainbows, so why can't they scribble? <gasps> ah, I thought if I gave her just one crayon, what could go wrong? Well, I'll tell ya. <gasps> ah! She ate it! Now my favorite bright pink crayon was traveling to the belly of my unicorn. This is probably why people are saying unicorns should never scribble. Because they eat crayons. Then it occurred to me, maybe unicorns don't know how to use crayons? So I gathered all my crayons and started to scribble. I made a blue scribble, a pink scribble, a yellow scribble, and even a crazy scribble. Now that she could see how crayons worked, I thought I would give her another chance to scribble. I took out a teal crayon <laughs> and placed it right in front of her. <gasps> and she ate half of it! Ah! <clears throat> Listen to me, unicorn. We do not eat crayons. We draw with them. But then I realized a unicorn couldn't hold a crayon like I could. Maybe that was why she was eating them. I had an idea. Maybe if I tied a few crayons to her horn, that would help her scribble. Ah! Within seconds, Glitter scribbles started shooting out like water from a fire hose! <laughs> Sparkling rainbow scribbles were everywhere! They were on the floor, on the ceiling, on the walls! They were even on my lamp! I've been begging my mom to redecorate my room for a while now. But I don't think this is what she had in mind. Then I heard a noise down the hall. This was it. I was going to be in so much trouble. I popped out of my room and blocked the door. Before my mom could say anything, I started to explain the mess she was about to see. Well, it all started when I heard to never let a unicorn scribble. But I had to find out why. So I gave my unicorn a crayon. And then she ate it. Then I tried to teach her to scribble. But then she ate another crayon. So I tied the crayons to her horn. And boy, was that horn magical. The scribbles started shooting out like a water fountain. And they were so sparkly. But it such a mess, and I'm sorry. My mom peeked around the corner and smiled. You didn't make a mess. You made a glowing masterpiece. When I turned around, all the scribbles were right on my easel. Not on the ceiling, not on the walls, not on my lamp. They were all on one big piece of paper. 
and it was the most amazing art ever. All this time, people wanted to stop unicorns from scribbling. It could be because they eat crayons, or because it's so messy. But if my unicorn had never scribbled, she would have never learned how to make this masterpiece. So the next time you hear, a unicorn shouldn't scribble. Just remember, all great art starts with a scribble. And even unicorns have to start somewhere. The end. Scared. <laughs> I am not scared. I am not scared. You are scared. I am not scared. Are you? No, I am brave. This will be fun. You look scared. Well, maybe a little. Don't worry. There are much scarier things than this. Mm, like what? Like snakes. Uh... Snakes? Yes, they are scary. Uh... Or what about a tub of hairy spiders? Now that is scary. Uh... Or a pit of hot <laughs> lava. A pan of fried ants. Uh... An alien with pink eyes and furry teeth. A roller coaster! Ah, with a snake! <laughs> Let's be scared together. Uh, okay. Scary. <sighs> the scariest. Truck. Here we go. Hope you're ready. Old McDonald had a farm. E -I -E -I -O. And on that farm he had an excavator. E -I -E -I -O. With a big, big gear and a dig, dig there. Here, dig, there, dig, everywhere, dig, dig. Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. Okay. 
with a scoop, scoop here and a scoop, scoop there. Here's scoop, there's scoop everywhere. Scoop, 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 scoop. Oh, McDonald at a farm. E I E I O. Changing the key here. <laughs> And on that farm he had a bulldozer. Ooh, well, okay. E I E I O. With a push, push here and a push, push there. Here a push, there a push, everywhere a push, push. Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. Scrape, break here, and a rake, scrape there. Here a scrape, there a rake, everywhere a scrape, break. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Throw me the ranch, will you? But I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that farm, he had a dump truck. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> With a dump Dump here and a dump dump there. You dump there a dump everywhere a dump dump. Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. And on that farm he had a steamroller. E I E I. With a squish smash here and a squish smash there. Here a squish, there a smash, everywhere a squish smash. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Here we go now. and cows. Welcome to the main event. And on that farm he had a truck! It's time to hit the hay. was a cat about town, dashing, charming, perfectly suave. He lived, unofficially, at the fire station and had, since a daring rescue involving a very small Luis, a very shrill smoke alarm, and a very tall house his tail still had the scorch marks. Luis liked to go visiting, as society cats do. Sometimes he'd travel in the fire truck. Everywhere he went, Luis was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. One night, after too much catnip and too many sardines, Luis was making his rounds when he took a wrong turn. He climbed a wall and saw Tabitha. Elegant, silky, perfectly sophisticated. 
Louise stopped. Tabitha stared. It was love. Love from afar. Love under the spotlight of the moon. Love thwarted by a thick glass door. And by Tabitha's owner. Shoo, she cried. Shoo. Louise shooed, but he wasn't done. The next morning, Tabitha stared out at a vast bouquet of sardine tins and twine and feathers. Louise smiled. Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner did not smile. Shoo, she cried, shoo. Louise shooed, but he wasn't done. The next day, he brought mice. The day after that, he brought pigeons. And after that, balloons, which is not easy when you're a cat. Each day, Louise and Tabitha stared into each other's eyes until Tabitha's owner chased Louise away. Louise needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream. You're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. And you need to be an inside cat, said Socks. Or at least look like one, said One-Eyed Winky. Louise had an idea. Um. The next day, Louise showed up at Tabitha's door once more. Louise smiled. Tabitha smiled. Tabitha's owner clutched her hands to her heart and opened the door. Louise was inside where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable. Until the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him. And Luis and Tabitha were thwarted by the thick glass door once more. Louise had a new home, and a new name, and a new owner. And all the sardines and cheese he could eat. <sighs> but all he wanted was Tabitha. And all Tabitha wanted was Louise. It was love, love from afar. Love from far too afar. Then the doorbell rang. Is this him? That's him. And that's not him. And Luis was a cat about town once more. Luis needed advice. He asked his friends over a bowl of cream. You're an outside cat, said Mr. Pickles. And she's an inside cat, said Socks. And that's just the way it is, said One-Eyed Winky. So Luis went visiting, as society cats do. He went visiting all across town. Everywhere he went, he was welcomed with open arms and leftovers. And everywhere he went, Tabitha wasn't. Until... One night, Luis was riding in the fire truck. When his tail began to tingle. 
Louise saw Tabitha. Elegant. Silky. Perfectly sophisticated. And in terrible danger. The sirens began to wail. Everyone, outside, cried the firefighters. The crowd was a cloud of arms and shrieks as it gathered on the corner. But there was no Tabitha. And suddenly, there was no Louise. The crowd waited and worried and fretted. Finally, the gray parted, and from it emerged Luis and Tabitha, leading Tabitha's owner. The crowd cheered. Tabitha's owner plopped down on the curb and clutched her hands to her heart. She looked at Luis and Tabitha and smiled. The cat show judge placed a blue ribbon on Tabitha and the firefighters placed a gold medal on Luis and declared them both perfectly heroic. Luis was back inside where everything was soft and warm and scratchable. And Luis and Tabitha were inseparable. Excited. Time to play. We'll have lots of fun today. Who's that dog? Fetching is my favorite trick. Bringing back a ball or stick. Branches, logs, or half a tree. No stick is too big, you see. Who's that dog? River, pond, or neighbor's pool. Any place that's fresh and cool. Leaping in a big blue lake? Feeling soggy, need a shake. Who's that dog? Playing with a pretty shoe. Licking first, then time to chew. No big deal. I'm sure it's fine. Finders keepers, this one's mine. Who's that dog? Digging out the deepest hole. Scratching dirt just like a mole. Dug this on my very own. Big enough to hide a bone. Who's that dog? Walking past the bathroom sink. Feeling thirsty, need a drink. Head down quick, that's how I roll. Slurping from the toilet bowl. Yeah. Who's that dog? Sitting by the table leg. Asking's naughty, must not beg. Puppy, I say. Pretty please. Can you 
you drop that piece of cheese? Aw, who's that dog? Napping on my favorite bed. Open mouth and snoring head. Counting cats is fun, it seems. Paws do wiggle in those dreams. Oh, who's that dog? Letting out a stinky toot. Not to blame and looking cute. Yuck! How dreadful! Who did that? Must have been the naughty cat. <laughs> Who's that dog? Finding squirrels in the park. Chasing them until it's dark. Left and right, and here and there. Climbed up high? Uh, that's not fair. Who's that dog? Looking back toward my rear. Spotting something wagging here. Grab it quick now. Must not fail. Silly me. <laughs> it's just my tail. Who's that dog? Sitting quietly on the rug. Getting ready for a hug. Waited for the day to end. At last, I'm with my favorite friend. That's my dog. It's a firefly night. When the moon is high and the stars are bright, Daddy tells me it's a firefly night. I hop off the porch. I feel the air warming my legs and messing my hair. Grass tickles my toes. I zip through the yard, chasing fireflies, gotcha, to put in my jar. Fireflies shimmer. One, two, three, four, five. My jar is like a light bulb that's just come alive. Fireflies glimmer, all of them glow. I race to show Daddy their dancing light show. Flickering quicker, they sparkle and shine.
I love catching fireflies, but they are not mine. I take one gently out of the jar. My hand is a cage for one tiny star. Uncurling my hand, easy and slow. I whisper, goodbye. Then I let it go. Soon, many fireflies open their wings. They flitter and flutter, soar over my swings. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, drift through moonlight. Five, four, three, two, one, blink in the night. We walk back to the house. I hold Daddy's hand tight. Will tomorrow, I ask, be a firefly night? On hot summer days, fireflies rest in tall grass or on the leaves of plants and trees. They like to fly around between dusk and midnight when the air is damp and cool. Fireflies range in size from one-fifth inch to one inch in length. Although commonly called a firefly or lightning bug, this insect is really a beetle. Fireflies need moist habitats. They are found around swampy and grassy areas, often at the edge of creeks, streams, and ponds. The firefly grows in stages, from egg to larva to adult insect. Some larvae give off light. When that happens, people call them glowworms. Because they live only three to four weeks, most adult fireflies do not eat. A female firefly will lay up to 500 eggs on the underside of leaves, in moss, or in water. Scientists believe fireflies light up in rhythmic patterns to attract mates or to warn one another about dangers. Farmers and gardeners love fireflies because the larvae eat many snails, slugs, and other pests. There are over 2,000 firefly species.
shapes in the sky. Shapes on the ground. Shapes are everywhere. Look around. There are shapes that roll. <laughs> shapes that can't. <sighs> shapes have sides that angle and slant. Some shapes stack, some shapes don't. Eggs and balls are shapes that won't. <gasps> Watch out! <laughs> shapes to throw. Shapes to share. Shapes that dangle in the air. Shapes for stop. Shapes for go. Whee! A house has many shapes to show. Shapes that shine. Wow. Shapes that freeze. Shapes of fruits that grow on trees. Mm. Yum. Shapes that glimmer up above. Shapes that make you think of love. <sighs> Shapes to open. Hi. Shapes to close. Bye. Shapes that stand up tall in rows. Shapes that teeter. <laughs> Shapes that play. <laughs> Shapes help people find their way. <laughs> A shape that's whole. A shape in pieces. Yay! Yummy! A shape with many folds and creases. <gasps> Shapes are heavy. Shapes are light. Pillow shapes are sure to fight. <laughs> Spheres are round. Circles are flat. Squares lie down. And cubes are fat. Now you know shapes. How cool is that? <laughs> Do you see the arrows, the circles, and the squares? Do you see the stars and hearts and ovals everywhere? Triangles, rectangles, diamonds, 
and pentagons of blue. Wow! Crescents, octagons, and semicircles. Do you see them too? Shapes of every size and kind are found inside this book. The whole world is made of shapes. <laughs> Angled, square, flat, or round. Shapes are everywhere. Look around. that Jack milked. This is the milk cow, spotted and strong, that lives on Jack's farm. And this is the grass that grows in the pasture that the cow chews and chews. This is Jack, the farmer, who milks the cow that stands in the pasture of his farm. Moo. And these are the children who enjoy the milk that comes from the cow that lives on Jack's farm. This is the thick cream skimmed from the top of the milk that comes from the cow that lives on Jack's farm. And these are the family's kittens that lap the sweet cream that comes from the cow that lives on Jack's farm. This is butter, churned from the cream that is made from the milk that comes from the cow. And this is the mommy who spreads the butter on bread for her three children. This is the whipped cream, whisked until it becomes light and fluffy, that starts with sweet cream that comes from the cow. And this is Jack, the daddy, who spoons the whipped cream, then asks his children, who wants to lick the beaters? This is the smooth yogurt that starts with heated milk that comes from the cow that lives on Jack's farm. And this is the grandma who offers her grandchildren yogurt with fresh strawberries on top. Mm. 
This is the ice cream made with sugar, eggs, and vanilla added to the heavy cream that comes from the cow. And this is the ice cream maker that makes the job easier. This is the farm family, thankful to the dairy cow. For the milk. For the cream. For the butter. For the yogurt. for the whipped cream, for the ice cream. Moo, you forgot the cheese. Here's the cheese. Thank you, Spotted Cow. The Mozzie with the Sharp Snozzy. I am a mosquito. And I love it. Um, but I didn't always feel that way. I lived near a pond, down in the meadow where the most beautiful butterflies fluttered all day long. Everyone adored the butterflies. And me, most of all. One day, I built up my courage, took a deep breath, and approached the butterflies. Can I flutter around with you for a bit? I asked them. But they laughed at me and flew away. I didn't want to give up, so I flew after them. I found them bouncing up and down on the daisies. Why can't I flutter around with you? I asked the butterflies. You are not good enough for us, they said. Look at us. We are so pretty, so smart, so fast, so adorable. <laughs> you are ugly. And boring. I walked away, not wanting to fly. I was too embarrassed to spread my flimsy wings. Oh. 
they were right. I was just a useless mosquito. And I hated it. a butterfly. Suddenly, I had an idea. Butterflies once again. I didn't ask them anything this time. I just fluttered around with them. I am a butterfly from over the hills, I finally said. Butterfly in the neighborhood, and I have come to join you. You are very pretty indeed, they agreed. And then, whoosh! When the darkness lifted, things were about to go from bad to worse. I had to act quickly. I didn't care about being pretty. <laughs> I didn't want to be a butterfly anymore. to be myself. I zoomed out of the jar and did what mosquitoes do best. Butterflies now want me to hang around, be their friend, and talk about how pretty we all are. But it's just not who I am. I am a mosquito, and I love it. on earth has a dance all its own but none so well known as the flamingos flamenco those hippos can hip hop they pop lock and drop but nothing can top the Flamingos Flamenco.
When the Wallabies waltz, it's a fancy affair. But it doesn't compare to the Flamingos Flamenco. Tigers flap in tap shoes. They shuffle and prance. But there's no better dance than the Flamingos Flamenco. Ballerina bears on point give a graceful ballet. But people still say it's no Flamingo Flamenco. Camels can 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 in a long chorus line. But nothing's as fine as the Flamingos Flamenco. Sloths like to slow dance. I bet you know why. But shouldn't they try? The Flamingos Flamenco? We each have a dance. So dance well your part. Dance with all of your heart. Even if it's not the Flamenco. So few of me by Peter H. Reynolds. Leo was a busy lad. No matter how hard he worked, there was always more to do. Maybe making a list would help. Leo's list of things to do grew and grew. So few of me and so much to do. If only there were two of me. Just then, there was a knock on the door. Leo opened the door and blinked and rubbed his eyes. It was another him. The new Leo grabbed the list and said, Two of us will get it done. He was helpful, but found even more to do. A third Leo joined the two. How about four? Four makes a fantastic team. But maybe a fifth would be even better. Hmm, still not enough. A sixth came in to help organize the lot. After meeting for hours, they decided they needed a seventh. With seven Leos, there was seven times as much work. Leo sighed and said, ah, we'll need eight just to catch our breath. The eight Leos worked furiously. Maybe nine Leos would get it done? Mmm, no. Add one more to make ten, each one busier than the next. Leo, 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 and Leo pause to review their list. Back to work! Nine Leo shouted. 
No time to stop. No time to rest. But Leo himself was exhausted. He slipped away to take a nap. Leo awoke to nine other Leos staring at him. What were you doing? They demanded. I was dreaming, Leo said softly. Dreaming was not on the list, they roared. Leo smiled, still savoring his dream. The Leos disappeared one by one. Leo wondered, what if I did less but did my best? Then one Leo is all I need. Just me. Just one. With time to dream. Once there was a boy who had no toys to play with. The other children in the neighborhood had lots of toys. Every afternoon, the boy would go to the park, sit under a big tree, and watch the other children play. Sometimes they let the boy play with their toys, sometimes not. This made the boy sad. One day, as the boy was sitting under the big tree in the park, he noticed a stick leaning against the trunk. He had never seen such an unusual stick. He picked it up. Suddenly, he was a pirate. Arg! Then a baseball player at bat. And then a knight on a steed. The boy noticed that there were words carved into the stick. He sang them like a song. Imagination lives in you. It's the fire in all you do. Use it well, and you can be anything you want to be. The boy carried the stick everywhere, and anywhere he was, he was anything he wanted to be. At the beach, he was a fisherman. At the lake, he paddled a canoe. He was a hiker in the highlands, and his imagination grew. Time passed, and the boy grew up. With the stick's inspiration, he became everything he wanted to be. He took business trips and airplane rides. He sailed the seas on rising tides. He gave of his time. He gave of his wealth. He gave from his heart. He gave of himself. He built a house high on a hill overlooking the valley where he had grown up. In the distance, he could see the park and the old tree where he used to sit. As the years passed, 
the boy became an old man. But each day, he took his stick with him to the park and sat on a bench near the tree where he had found the stick so long ago. He would sit for hours and watch the children play. All of the children seemed to have lots of toys to play with, except for one little girl. The little girl always sat under the old tree and watched the other children play with their toys. This made the old man sad. Early one morning, the old man walked to the park, but instead of sitting on the bench, he went over to the tree. He leaned the stick against its trunk, walked to his bench, and waited. Soon, the children arrived at the park with their toys. He waited to see if the little girl would show. He saw her walk slowly toward the tree. She peered down at the unusual stick leaning against its trunk. She picked up the stick and suddenly, she was a princess. A fencer. A surfer riding a wave. She noticed that there were words carved into the stick, and as she danced away, she sang them like a song. Imagination lives in you. It's the fire in all you do. Use it well, and you can be anything you want to be. And the old man smiled and walked home. If you don't have books, what are you waiting for? It's a kid-safe, ad-free library full of storybooks that are brought to life. Ask your grown-up and start exploring more fun stories like these. Seriously, you have to check it out. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.